Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to attack an old topic that I think needs to be said over and over and over again, and that is some of the rules and regulations that we use here at Winning Strength for daily programming. So let's get into it. The first thing that you need to think about in any type of daily programming is GPP. Now what does that stand for? General Physical Preparedness. That means that you have to be in shape, okay? So it's just kind of a fancy word to say, I'm in shape to do a specific task. Now the reason that GPP is so important and needs to be thought of in your workouts is because you can't do what you can't recover from. Meaning that if you do too hard of a workout or too many simultaneous hard workouts, what's gonna end up happening is that you're not gonna recover from them and you're gonna have to either take a step back or cause massive overtraining or injury. So general physical preparedness is kind of the backbone or the base of the pyramid to build that up. So let's see how we attack that. So the first thing that we attack in the workout is winning warm-ups. Now, winning warm-ups have been used for a lot of years here. Some people have kind of utilized them slightly without really knowing what they're doing. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a taste of kind of what it is. So it com combines three exercises, okay? These three exercises are done in a circuit. Now, these three exercises done in a circuit create GPP, because we're not gonna rest between this, okay? So these three exercises, right, we got one, two, and three. Now, the trick with the winning warm-up is you're going to select two movements that you feel are weaknesses. So what we're gonna use as an example today is dynamic lower. So for most people, we're gonna have a hamstring issue, we're gonna have a low back issue, or core, which is kind of the same thing, just front or back. And then we need a movement pattern solidifier, which would be a belt squat or a goblet squat, because we're probably gonna squat doing dynamic day, right? So with these three things in mind, we're gonna do each of these for four sets of 25. So each of these are getting 25 reps in about a 12 to 15 minute round. So in 12 to 15 minutes, you're doing four sets of 25 of three exercises, two of which are attacking weaknesses, and one is solidifying or reprogramming or helping a motor pattern, okay? So this is how we set up the GPP. It always comes first, and why? I didn't realize how important it was to be in really good shape until I was super strong. Now that was probably behind the eight ball, and if I'd have been doing this stuff since I was in my early 20s, I would have never had a capacity problem and I probably would have gotten stronger way faster. So I'm trying to help you guys into realizing that you better be in shape if you want to be super strong. The next big aspect of the daily programming is the core lift or lifts. Now, if you're not a competitive lifter or you're just a recreational guy or you work in tactical like a lot of the guys that I train do, you want to pick one compressive movement. That means a squat or a deadlift. Now, if you're a competitive lifter, you're going to need to use two and this is going to be way too short of a video for us to go into that. So you wanna check out the website and go get the powerlifting manual or get our online coaching. But for general sake of saying and for people, a core lift or lifts are gonna be selected either by one of two means. We have to ask ourselves in this day, are we trying to get stronger or are we trying to get faster, right? So in these two, these two scenarios are very, very important. You're gonna to have to be strong in order for your number to go up, but you're also gonna to have to get quicker in order for you to be able to realize your strength. So this is where it comes down to this. Each day we're making force, but are we making mass or acceleration? So on the faster day we're making acceleration, and on the slower, heavier day we're making more mass, right, more weight on the bar. So we have to decide where this is. Now, in a daily programming, you can only sustain so much volume of this. That means if you're doing speed, your work range is gonna be between six and 10 sets, okay, and if you're doing heavy, in a long-term process, you're only gonna be able to withstand about six to eight sets. And that is progressing up to the actual maximal effort lift, okay? So in speed, you can do about six to 10 sets of two or three reps. And in heavy, you can do six to eight sets of whatever rep range you select. For most of us training raw, it's gonna be around fives. I don't suggest going much lower than fives based on the fact you're not gonna attack a lot of muscle tissue. So in a heavy day, you say, let's, we're gonna work up to, say, a 315 squat. We're gonna do 95 for five, and say we're gonna do it for five, right? 
We're gonna do 95 for five, 135 for five, 185 for five, 225 for five, 275 for five. Let's say 315 for five was our OPR. Now we're gonna to try to maybe do 320 for five, right? We got about six to eight sets we've made in that progression up to that maximum point, okay? So once we've decided if we're gonna go fast or we're gonna go heavy, now we have part B of the lift. Now this particular part of the lift we saw in the warm should take about 12 to 15 minutes. Now if you're in good shape, this should take 20 to 25 minutes in order for you to complete the core lift, okay? So you don't wanna go any longer than that or you're gonna start breaking other rules that we have in other videos. Okay, the third and final part of your daily workout regimen should be your accessories. Now, does anybody know what accessories are based on? Well, let's wait a couple of seconds and see if you can figure it out. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The word that comes to mind is weaknesses. So, when you do your core lift or say you, you got old footage of your old competitions or you failed at a certain point, those should be giving you key assessment thought processes on how to develop accessories, right? So what we want to do is select two to three exercises that attack weak points. So accessories are really the fix behind your mechanical or activating ability to hitting accessories or weak points. Remember that if you're basing a lot of your daily workout regimens on your weakest links, whether it be upper body or lower body, you're doing better than probably 75% of the population that just goes in and trains a muscle group and has no conception of why. Weak points are the, de the detrimental or deciding factor on how you're supposed to train. It Obviously you saw select 66% of the winning warmup. Now the core lift is not really based on weaknesses, but could be if you're programming it long term and the accessories are solely based on weak points alone. Now you notice we only said two to three exercises. That's not very much. Why? We're running into a time problem. So if we have 12 to 15 minutes for warmup, right? Now we have 20 to 25 for the core lift, okay? Now, what do we got left? Well, in my opinion, you only have about anywhere from 50 to 65, maybe 70 minutes in a workout, okay? Once you do that, you're gonna overtrain or you're out of shape and you need too much rest in between sets. So that only leaves us roughly about 20 minutes, plus or minus, maybe about five to 10 minutes, okay? For these core lifts or these accessories, okay? So we got, if you look at this, we're, we're averaging somewhere between 50 and 65 minutes to do a whole workout. Now, when you hear people in the gym go, oh man, I worked out for two and a half hours yesterday. Now I hope you can see that that is complete horse shit. You shouldn't be doing any of that. And they're probably not training for any real purpose. Rest periods are too long and they have no focus in their programming or what they're doing. So this is daily programming, point A, point B, and point C. If you're following these three points, you're probably gonna have a better workout long-term, you're gonna make longer-term progress, and you're gonna stay away from injuries because you're fixing weak points. So if you like this video, go watch a lot of the other ones on YouTube. It's gonna give you a really good library of how to train smart. And if you just don't have time to learn how to do this stuff, it took me 20-something years to perfect this, sign up for our online coaching or go check out our manuals. Now also, if you have any questions beyond what we just talked about, sign up for Patreon. We show a lot more of these workouts and how to utilize them, and we post examples every week, and you can ask questions 24-7.